Good morning, everybody. We are underway with WCS here. I am your new host. My name is Nathanius as well. <laughs> just a little bit darker, I suppose. No, I'm just kidding. The whole time it was just me. It was in control. I'm joined by Rotterdam for the second match. We've got a nice little a spicy Ativa P for us. Yeah, it's going to be a fun one. I mean, Yutomo's been uh, pretty vocal about his terror and versus Protoss over the last they few weeks. They tend to be. But I, I always take it with a grain of salt because Yutomo, he can talk for weeks about how it's impossible to win. And then you finally get to cast him. You're like, okay, well, let's see what he really struggles with. Bam, 3-0. And I'm like, oh, yeah. okay, okay, Mark. Okay. Different builds, like yeah. mech and bio. He's just like myrtillating the guys. Like, well, I got lucky. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why I didn't build six war prisms. I don't know what's going on. You're like, <laughs> pretty much, right? And with DNS, like, I, I do really love watching DNS because he is the opposite of a boring Protoss. DNS always attacks, sometimes perhaps a little more than he should, but there is never a dull game with DNS. He will never just sit back with his cannons yeah. and wait forever. No, DNS is a very aggressive Protoss. Not necessarily on the line of like, he can only all in. No, he will get forges, he will get upgrades. He just loves to attack. So technically this should be a very fun best of three with uh, plenty of fireworks. And sometimes attacking style players I find tend to be a little bit more messy, but DNS is really not that way. He's on the end of the spectrum, it's very crisp and he hits timings very mm -hmm. well. So his results have kind of shown that. He's done very well for himself and I thought he's kind of risen up as one of the absolute top European Protosses. If, even if not like one of the most recognized. Like the hardcore players still are like, DNS is really scary and yeah, really yeah. good. He's always at the top of the ladder, but he's not a showtime just yet. We still need a big, big win from this guy. DNS is not the guy that you read about on the forums, but when you talk to the other top players in Europe, DNS will always be mentioned. But yeah, right after Nip, you know, they always go Showtime, Drogo, Arstam. DNS is really good as well, Mana, of course, and that's kind of, you know, the five, six usual suspects that we have when it comes to the European Protoss players. Anyway, Jeffrino, here we go on the left top side of the beautiful Acropolis. I'm a big fan of this map. We're looking at the main base of one of those top French protoses. It is DNS. Do you know what his name stands for? Um, <laughs> I think a while ago I read does not succeed, but I don't no! know. No! <laughs> I know that's a joke. <laughs> well, a man that we don't need to guess what his name means because nobody knows it all. It's the lower right hand side blue Terran from Amsterdam. It's you thermal. <laughs> Absolutely not from Amsterdam. <laughs> Mark Schlappi. He's actually uh, kind of from Rotterdam. Basically, kind of. Arstam is from uh, like nearby. It's a village. Nearby. Like lives in his own little town but nobody really knows where he lives. So we basically say that <laughs> you know basically all the good players are around Rotterdam, Jeff. Yeah. The problem is that Harstam supports that other football team and I will never get over that. Yeah, you can't forgive him for that one. <laughs> We'd see I mean, he does play bit. Protoss, right? So he gets a couple points back, but... Uh, just a couple, though. Yeah. That's not enough to get you all the way there, if you ask me. <laughs> do no. you think we're going to see... Uh, this is a map that's obviously very big. I do think this is one of the maps where if you want to play Mac as a Terran player, you could say that it's a little harder, right? To keep those main bases safe. There are more ways to attack than, for instance, the Thunderbird. Yutomo in the past has already played Mac against Protoss plenty of times, even before anybody else did it. There was a time where everybody said like, oh, Mac is super terrible against Protoss. And then he like secretly kind of chuckled about it because he's like, well, I've got some success with my builds. What do you think, Jeff? Mac or bio? It's going to be bio, I think. You think? Um, not too long ago, and you know this because you commentated, we saw you thermal take on Goblin in the Clash Invitational. Yep. <laughs> and uh, it was a thumping one way from Mr. You thermal. And it was a lot of bio in that. Not mm -hmm. to th That doesn't necessarily tell me he'll never do Mac, but I'm just seeing on this new map, a little bit more confidence from you, Thermal, in the TVP matchup with that bio. I think this is going to be either a Hellion drop or Hellions in the natural with a Liberator in the main base, because there is an SCV in the top side of the Acropolis, and it's not where it's supposed to be, Jeff. What's he up to? <laughs> He's going to build a cheeky starport over there. I wouldn't be surprised to see Hellion drop. If we take a look at the main base of DNS, we can see that there is a lot of surface area. Yeah. To get those Hellions in, to get a medevac in, most Protoss players, professional Protoss players, will skip a shield battery in the main base because obviously they believe greed is good, which it is, until four aliens show up. Until here, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I was cutting a corner, and then that corner cut me pretty bad, actually, as it turns out. <laughs> so I kind of like it, though. I like my Utomo bringing the aggression here in game one. With the robotics facility, if I have to make a prediction right now, Jeff, like if we do Please prediction, do. I'll say like four aliens get dropped in the main base, they kill around 11 probes, and DNS makes a war prism and attacks him with a bunch of stalkers in a prism, and then, and then it dies. And then it either works or it doesn't. Yeah. That's kind of the way that I see this game going at this point. 
Reaper is gonna hop into the main base. It will ignore the Stalker, and it's just gonna take a look what else is there. It's gonna be like, oh, nice. I know where my Hellions are supposed to go. Seize the Robo. Sure. Uh -oh. And it is a Wallen-ish at the front of the Natural, which is nice, but if it's... DNS has no idea that the Starport is out on the map, though. Is it in path? Does it see that? It... This is gonna be close. Now the medevac's coming a little bit too late. Nope, and the observer's going too fast. Dang you, observer! Have we talked about slowing it down? <laughs> Have we? Has anyone? This is going to be a really painful one for DNS guys. There is no, there's not even a spotter pylon, by the way. So by the time that he's going to get the heads up, okay, maybe it's this observer. Uh, yes, this well, observer I is going to give him a little bit, but the stalkers are way out of position. DNS, you've got a lot of probes to save, buddy. There's the one warping. That's a, he's like, you can almost not fit through there. <laughs> uh, I do like the split, though. You can't yep. just run with the probes. So he's trying to just kind of space it out. Nicely done. Only loses five. Could get the medevac. It's going to be not close. Goes down to the natural. Probably going to get a few more probies here, right? Probes oh, are lined up there. He's going to ah. lose that medevac, though. Yes. Oh, but they're so... Ah. Well, that's 12 already. Number 13 goes down as well. 14. That is an insane amount of damage. And you remember that warp prism? I believe that these stalkers right now are going to probably hop into that uh, warp oh. prism. We don't have one yet. Just a good observer, though. Mm. Sees the Widow Mines. No, he's actually going Robo Bay here, and he's building up probes. Now, you'll notice DNS down to 35 workers versus the 39 of Euthermal. Usually, at this point in time, most Terran players will tell you, Protoss has about 76 probes. So, a lot of probes <laughs> have been killed. <laughs> DNS has been slowed down, but he's not out yet. And, Kevin, ah. you thought Warp Prism this time. He's going to go... It's got to be Colossus, I guess. He can't go... Disruptors, yeah. I don't know what it's going to be. I know that's going to be painful that's as the Liberator is going to show up in the main base. And you have to fight that and then that spot. Uh, your stalkers have to go in that zone. And that also means that, well, I mean, I want to say the main base is more exposed, but it does have that observer. He spots the medevac, so at least he knows about this one. But Jeff, this is a horrible, horrible position to be in as a Protoss player. DNS knows that there's A, nothing he can do, and B, he'll just well, get harassed over and over again. This wind of mine! Oh my god, one man is actually gonna fire! Oh! With the help of the probes! And the Liberators push back. The nice thing about that too is it was just shutting down the gas, which is the better thing for you, right? If you're trying to rebuild probes, get back into a game, not mining a little bit of gas is okay. So the Colossus gets started up here. Extra factories have been built in the middle. It'll phase. be the myth. Yep. Um, you mentioned that series that he had against Goblin, and that is correct. In that series, there was a lot of bio coming out of your thermal. But Goblin and DNS are basically playing two different races, right? Goblin True. loves Phoenix Colossus. DNS loves Gateway units, and will probably make some Colossus, but it's not that heavy on the Phoenixes. So maybe your thermal just feels that is this a moment to play Mac? Obviously, your thermal's economy looks really good. I mean, a Terran yeah. player being up five workers. There is one thing I want to say. Well, DNS, you're eating some big neck shots Let there, buddy. Say your thing. I gotta, I gotta, I'm gonna do my thing. Okay. Well, what I want to say is that even though you told me they did a lot of damage, if he's playing mech, the game is gonna slow down for a while, right? This is not like bio. There is not about like 16 yes. or 80 Marines. So yes, DNS took a bit of a beating, but with the strategy that you told me went for, He's basically giving DNS a chance to crawl yes. his way back into this game. Kevin, that was exactly my point. It doesn't surprise me because you co-commentated with the Muslim who did beat Serral recently, and I <laughs> have beaten Jon Snow in the latter. So the two of us on the same wavelength, like, I totally get it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I, I understand that. Great minds. <laughs> we'll see if that's a mistake, though, because I think this is more of a, like, and this is the part to make defense of the, the pro gamers when the commentators are like, this is stupid. Why did you do this? We get back to the game. I think a lot of times this portion of the, the strategy is more of a like, on this map, I prefer mech yeah. versus I killed 14 probes. I think if I just follow up with bio, I'll be able to kind of keep the pedal to the metal and, and not let him get back into the game. The other thing too here though, is that mech's not quite what we used to talk about, right? It used to be very slow. You never attack. It gets to 25 minutes. Then you have this unstoppable juggernaut of an army. We're seeing a lot more battle mech. That being said, looking at this style, are we seeing Cyclones come out? Not really yet, right? So maybe it's not the battle mech. Maybe we're just going to play it slow. Yeah, it's tanks and Vikings up to this point, and I don't really hate it. DNS is, by the way, playing uh, double robotic facilities. He's going to get a few more gateways. It's getting charged before a blink. I actually would have loved, I mean, obviously it was hard, right, with that starboard taking as much damage as it did and it being delayed for a while. It would have been so sweet for your thermal if he was able to keep one or two of those medevacs alive just to drop once again in the main base. Because if you look where the units from DNS are, he is posturing himself like he's about to make an 
all-in committed attack. Well, obviously, we can see that he's not doing that at all, guys. He's right. preparing for that next phase in the game. But that obviously meant that if your Thermal had either a Liberator or another Medivac with a couple of units inside of it, there was a potential to do even more damage there. Yeah. And you can see the lasting effect of DNS being behind. Against mech like this, you want to be going... He wants, like, saturated four bases going towards five as opposed to just now going for his fourth almost at the same time as you Thermal. So definitely DNS is still behind. We don't want to make this sound like you Thermal made this critical mistake and is about no, to lose. It's right. really not the case. I also do like the army composition of Euthermal. No, he's not doing the battle mech, but Vikings and tanks. Mm -hmm. If DNS doesn't get hip to this, the tanks will absolutely wallop with the Vikings against a colossal heavy army. Uh, I don't think that DNS, I don't know if he's like just trying to pretend like he wants to be aggressive while he's actually buying time for himself. I'm just kind of afraid that he's going to get carried away soon. He'll be like, oh, I've got a couple of Zealots with charge. I've heard that the Zealot is the real problem right now, so here we go. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, no, like you can't run a Zealot into a planetary fortress uh, and Hellions. No. The only thing that Euthermal does not have is a couple of Widow Mines, but he morphs these Hellions into Hellbats. I just don't really see too much potential for these uh, Zealots. That's very nice for the it. random Archons to run into those aliens. Nothing's random with these pro gamers, dude. He, he designed that <laughs> seven minutes ago. Saw it coming. He's got the can there as well. He's going to need more, though. It's, he's up to four bases. Uh, Uthermal, incredibly, by the way, 81 SCVs. Something we're seeing more from Terran players, too, where they kind of have that huge swell of SCVs and then later go ahead and trade out some of them once you have five, six, seven orbitals behind that. And that's when the army gets really scary. He also has the double armories going for full upgrades, and it has just been tanks, Vikings, and Hellions. You turn us up to 15 tanks, yeah. <laughs> 15. A lot of tanks. Yes, that is a crazy amount of tanks. There is a war prism on the way. Is that the first or the second prism? I guess that is the second prism. If we take a look at the main base of Uturmo real quick, you could say there is technically one spot where uh, war prisms could fly in, and that's on the left side here, above that missile turf. That looks like a reasonable area. Now, obviously, there are plenty of Vikings, guys, so Uturmo can always bring yeah. over those Vikings. But that is a spot that I can maybe see DNS utilize and try to get one of those big warpings in. The Hellions are back. The probes have heard the stories, and now they're experiencing the barbecue. There's a lot of workers going to go down over here. And the army of DNS is out mid-map, and now earlier it was posturing. I do believe that. Now I think there's a chance that in DNS's vision, it's just that crimson, beautiful red from that French flag. It's now or never, perhaps. I mean, he is close to maxing out, right? And he technically has a slightly bigger army, but running into all of those tanks that are sieged yeah. up, I mean, there is a legendary clip that Terran players will always talk about. Wow, <laughs> 39 probes went down. Only four stalkers. So, you know, army-wise, there were not too many losses. He can't do this. Well, he's going to try, Jeff. He does have a lot of Archons, and Archons are very no. good at soaking up tank shots. He's not going to try. No way. You don't look at that and think you can attack them. There's nobody that thinks that. I think he's going to try on the not right side. Not even Bly. Bly wouldn't do it. I think he's going to try to attack on the right no. side. No. He's attack. positioning, but he can't think it's possible. Well, look at this, he's split. What is the Guardian? Okay, oh, pick up there on the Q. Yeah, yeah, I like that. It's not that much edgier. He's really positioning himself like he's about to go. I know he's doing it, but it's a fake. It's to fake us commentators out. We're silly. There's nobody that would do this, Kevin. I think DNS might be your guy, Jeff. <laughs> no! DNS might he's be your guy! He's thinking it's possible! DNS might be your guy! Look at the guy dream. Look at him dream. <laughs> oh my god. He's like, I made a mistake! <laughs> That was a lot of tanks. That was a lot of tanks. 16 siege tanks are still alive. You know, DNS didn't actually even lose that much. He lost mostly zealots. Kevin, someday I want the confidence to look at something like that and say, <laughs> you know what? Most products couldn't do it, but if I micro hard enough right now, if I target the right stuff, I can do it. That's a young man right there. The great thing is that he had a couple of Colossus in the mix as well. Right? Yeah. Like, These imagine? guys are so strong, dude. <laughs> Seeing the videos of Naniwa just thrashing people in 2012 with nine Colossus. <laughs> He's like, what if I attack over here? There's oh, only no. eight tanks. There's a War Prism with four Zealots that is just chilling. Oh! Yeah, that just went Sorry. down right here. Sorry, there's nine more probes, 11 more probes by these Hellions. DNS is losing a lot of expensive stuff. There were four Zealots inside of that Prism that he just lost. Yeah, well. There's a battle cruiser on the map, by the way. Jeff, who sure. in the fleet? When you uh, get this far ahead, you can kind of do whatever you want. 61 probes have gone down up to this point, by the way. Three battle cruisers in queue. The DNS is just kind of like on the outside, like, why don't you come out? Why don't you want to come out of there? This map gives uh, Uthermal four bases, and the fifth base is not even that impossible either. Sometimes on these turtle maps, like four bases, you're guaranteed the fifth map, the fifth base is really hard to get to. 
6 o'clock, or I'm not even looking, yeah, we can't talk about it. Um, or on the right side, 3 o'clock, both okay. He's just, it's gonna be one of those weird games where the only big fight we had was that attempt on the 30 tanks, and then he's gonna leave because he loses too many pros, right? Or DNS, he has lost 77 workers now up to this point. Yeah. You know the biggest problem for DNS in this game, Jeff? Other than, like, I do want to be fair to DNS, guys. He had a very bad start. He lost way too many probes. He lost way more probes than he was ever supposed to. And after that, I think he was just always hoping that he would get lucky, that Uterma would do something that he really shouldn't have done, that he could fight the tanks when they're on siege. He eventually probably just panicked. He's like, oh my goodness, like, my build is not going anywhere. I think I need to make magic happen right here, right now. One battle cruiser does go down. But, yeah, this game is starting to look very, very dire for DS. He has no armor upgrades, by the way, either. He's getting his air upgrades now at this point. Yeah. But the main problem, where I want to go with my story, is that he just lacks map vision. He lacks observers. He's got one obs right now. I think before he had two obs, he lost one of them. That's, that's not enough against Mac. You need to see these Hellions coming over and over again. Otherwise, you'll keep losing probes. Kind of, Kev. I mean... You're like the doctor that just showed up at a major car accident and he's splattered all over across the road and you're like, well, one of the big issues here is that he's not breathing that well. And then <laughs> everyone's kind of like, yeah, it's part of it, I guess, but feels like there's a few issues going on here. He's just circling on the outside. I mean, he's still maxed out, by the way. It doesn't, oh, all of the battle cruisers, cruisers, by the way, just teleported to the right top yeah, side. What's the anti-air for DNS? He doesn't have that many Blink Stalkers. He's got six star well, ten yeah. Arkles. He's got ten Arkles. Sure, w but they're not good at running down Bowser. <laughs> so DNS is poking along the whole thing, and he's going, man, this defense is really good. <laughs> I'm going to try it again, though. He is. He's spacing out. Let's go on. Yeah. yeah. It's like if the battle cruisers are out of position, he is actually getting in range. He's got all these tanks. Two Stalkers blink forward very bravely. The Immortals will clean up those tanks as well. The real question, like you said, is, is there enough anti-air? We've got four Archons and two Stalkers remaining. That Colossus will go down as well against the Vikings. There simply is not enough on the ground to gun down these air units. Now, it is 170 supply from the Dutch Terran to the falling 116 supply. And the battle cruisers are going to have their their way with this mineral line. So even if they die to these, these Stalkers, it's been worth it. Actually, they've... Well, no, maybe these just teleported. There was three originally. I'm starting to get the feeling that Yutoma has lost a lot of SCVs against Protoss recently, and he's taking out all of his anger at the probes of DNS in this game. Yeah. A staggering amount of 119 workers went down this game, while Yutoma will take the 1-0 lead off the back of some pretty cool mech play. Almost certainly, um, DNS lost more probes than Bly will make in this entire group. Oh, I believe that. 119? Drones, yeah. I mean, then again, he, Bly does need a couple of extra drones for those buildings, right? Like, Anidas takes a drone. Give all of you. <laughs> not, you know, so. Give him all of them. He's still <laughs> not going to make that many. Okay. Well, in the first two games, he made the, what, 45? That was a mistake, and then he started with the 12 and went up to, like, 15 or 20, let's say. Mm -hmm. So he's got about 60 more to go in another best of three or two. Nah, I believe he'll make 190. Okay. Just barely. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's going to be close. He's going to hit that number. We're like, oh, we're saved. Okay, yeah. well. By the way, aren't you surprised how well this Hellion drop opener does over and over and over again? I feel like, <laughs> you know, the memes aside, okay, I almost I never feel this strategy lose in tournaments. I thought you were joking, yeah. No, every time they show up, I... I <laughs> I don't usually get mad, but there's a little bit of a like, oh, he did that. Yeah. Mm, you're so good. Which must be what everyone thinks about when they face Protoss. When like an Oracle shows up, they're like, oh, yeah. yeah. Or that Y prison with the Zealots when they just move out. It's like Zealots. I, I go DTs every time. Yeah, Why okay. would you? But that's beautiful Drop as well. But Libyan zealots. And I must say, uh, DNS actually did a phenomenal job in his main base, right? Like you said, he did a really good job spreading out those probes. I would have lost 15 probes there, hands down. Be like, oh my god, no shield battery, four Hellions. Can't run, you gotta <laughs> spread. Yeah, stalkers <laughs> were in the naturals, like that's it. But DNS did a really good job in spacing it out, but then unfortunately the two Hellions got picked up. And then in the natural, he lost like nine more, and that's what made it very painful. And then obviously Uterma did a great job with the follow-up aggression. Even if the mines didn't do anything, yeah. it keeps DNS at home which is obviously what you want as a Terran when you're getting three command centers. Yeah, if you only would have lost the five, that's of course would have been a fantastic defense, mm -hmm. but it's 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 always, and in, in, you know, you heard Kevin, he said 12. That's about the number that drops you just below the Terran player, and then from there, and, and like we said, the other thing here too, and I don't think we're wrong on this, but you Thermal went with the slower style after that. He, he did yeah. not, he was just Hellions kind of coming out. It's very common for a Protoss to at least catch those harassing uh, Hellions, and then their economy is bigger for longer, and probably nobody tries the attack that DNS did. So that, that game still could have been recoverable 
but it ended up not being. It could be also a, a, an anti-DNS thing, right? Where Ethereum was like, you know, I know DNS. Oh, he'll He's attack gonna me. attack me anyway. So yeah, maybe I shouldn't make Hellions and Cyclones here because there is a chance that maybe I end up losing a couple of them when I shouldn't. And then suddenly I get a click and I lose. Yeah. He's like, if I get 16 tanks and a bunch of supply depots and a planetary fortress, he probably won't attack me. And Vikings. <laughs> it was, <laughs> like I said, there, there's someone there are some Terran players on the European ladder that just watched that attack and felt very good. They're like, oh, yeah, DNS has done that to me, too, but it worked. <laughs> felt really bad. And that's all it takes, right, is the one time for an, an attack like that to work, and DNS is like, yeah, of course, it works every time. It's like, no, yeah. not this time. Now, obviously, New Repugnancy is a map that is a lot smaller than Acropolis, so there's a good chance we're going to see a completely different game coming out of these two. So far, Elazer winning his previous match. If you guys just joined us, welcome. You're watching WCSE Challenger, and Jeff, what is this? Pilot in the right bottom side. Is this Max Pax, Kevin? No, it's not. <laughs> There's a gateway inside his main, yeah, yeah. but it's very early. Is this going to be that GSL thing where you do build another gateway over here, though, and do like a stalker harass? I assume that's very good against Hellion opening, by the way, if, if, if he's predicting that. Yep. Yep, I, I think above all, he just wants to deny slash kill or command center on the low ground, and maybe even a little bit more. Like, obviously, if you open up like this, this is a pretty big investment coming out of DNS. He wants to make sure that A, your terminal does not scout this early enough, and B, just probably show up. Your terminal really needs to get a bunker as quick as possible against openings like this, because we all know that Marines cannot micro against Stalkers if no. they don't have Sim or Medivex or, no, or their combat shield. Mm -hmm. They need all the accoutrements. This is good, by the way, by DNS. He's keeping uh, Utomo busy. He's trying to make it seem like, no, everything's normal. I'm just doing a normal, standard, regular, annoying Protoss things. Utomo needs to get a bunk. Oh my god, he went straight reactor, by the way. Well, he also just did not scout at all. Yeah. So, so this, this could be a nice thing against Uthermal, too, if you study his play. Jeff, he needs to get a bunker, because he went straight reactor. He has no Reaper. Yeah, we'll have two Space Marines, Kevin, in a minute. Just give him a second here. God. Well, You're all worried. I'm like, he's calling upon literally post-human super warriors. Like, don't worry, okay? Jiminy Christmas. <laughs> well, like you said, you has got a tiny bit around his base right now. He's setting another SCV towards the bottom, but yeah, not, that's not, not bottom enough. <laughs> that's a, I really love this this idea behind scouting. It's like, yeah, okay, I'm fine. It's like, but that's it. That's the scout. <laughs> I'll like, see if a proxy's there now. <laughs> <laughs> well, this adept shows up, and you tell me, like, oh, you know what? I'm surprised. It was adept. It's adept, yes. Yeah. And that ends up being so good for you, Thermal. Like, don't get me wrong, he's going to take some damage here. But there's an expansion behind this, and DNS is not really leaning into this. If it was just straight Stalkers being Chrono Boosted out, I'd think Liquid Thermal is in a lot of trouble. Yep. Stalkers have more range, and Stalkers are just a little easier to micro against adepts. Now, don't get me wrong, 3 4 adepts on top of these Marines, this can still hurt. But DNS needs way more value out of his opening than he's got so far. He's got his adapts right now. Though. Yeah, but the Marine gun with that straight reactor is actually getting yeah. pretty high. Kevin, those are Space Marines, dude. The adepts, <laughs> at best, can run back to their village and hope to live. Like, that's that's all they have. Who needs a bunker? Who needs a bunker when you got this? This is actually kind of fun. I've never seen people go Sayonara, adepts in this that's minus one adept already for DNS. Now he loses the high ground as well. Loses the second adept. This is not pretty, Jeff. It's, it's, a, pretty it's a disaster, Kevin, is what I would say. And now it's just one space marine chasing them back. Okay, they do. Yeah, but they show up to Hellions. So the good news for the adepts is they wow. see the Hellions coming out. I, I, he probably could have predicted that. But he's going to lose, what, five adepts for this information? Yeah, I think it's four at this point. Now he lost three adepts, and the fourth one will get out. But obviously, it's a big investment. He went for that proxy gate early on. His next is a little bit later. We take a look at the work account. 29, 30 SCVs against 31. This is a beautiful scenario for a Terran play to oh, be yeah. in because of, of course, those orbital commands, those mules. Cloak Banshee is going to be the follow-up for your term. This is probably going to be... Oh, he's going to have so many Marines. It's probably going to be one of those Banshees harassing in the main base yeah. while the Marines and tanks run to the other side of the map. Then he could potentially build a couple of bunkers on the other side of the map as well because I know that your loves to do it. DNS is in serious trouble, Jeff. Yep. It is shaping up to be rough, and it's actually going to potentially get this uh, proxy gateway scout as well. It's just another avenue of potential comeback for DNS maybe getting closed. We see these Hellions. Yep, they're absolutely going to find it. You know what I think is even funnier now that I think back about it? Is that he's actually going for Blink here. 
and then he still opened up with the adepts. While stalkers would already be better in the first place, like in these pro gamers, guys, they will never yeah. lose a stalker against marines that don't have stim. That just doesn't happen. Eventually, your terminal will need to get either a bunker to keep himself safe, or a tank on the high ground, or he needs to get a cyclone out. But DNS would never mess up stalker against the uh, marine micro. Right. And now that he's even going for blink as well. Yeah, it really doesn't add up to me. These Banshees are going to be super annoying because they're going to keep these Blink Stalkers at home or at least force well, out more Stalkers. Whatever it is, make it's them not going to be pretty. Home. Yeah, they're not going to be here for this. And there's not even an Observer nearby either. So the Banshee begins its work and is... No, there is an Observer nearby. Excuse me. Makes its way into the main. But the thing about a Banshee like this is even if it eventually does die and get shut down, it's going to kill a lot. Now, another Banshee gets caught out on the map. That's nice. And here's that Observer to Blink up. But it's that same problem DNS ran into earlier, only it's just like the baby form. He's like, where do I attack here? I'm having a tough time figuring this out. Oh my god. This is gonna try to harass a little bit, but yeah, that's actually... I mean, he's lost way more probes on his side of the map than he's gonna get SCVs over here, that's for sure. And in return, he's gonna lose a couple of these expensive Stalkers as well. Yeah. I know people don't often think of Stalkers as expensive, but in this phase in the game, if you got a little bit of a wonky, winky dinky economy, then Stalkers are actually kind of expensive units that sure. you're not supposed to lose. At least he's keeping you throw more at home, so it's not yes. going to be one of these very early pushes, but, I mean, Steam, Comet Shield and stuff is still on the way. Very good chance. I mean, so we know there's no tech lab on the starport. There's no more Banshees going to be coming out, but with the Stalkers over here as well, even if there were, that would actually work in DNS's favor. He's cutting some corners again, getting some harass done in here, and he's going to be able to blink away, and looks like he saves all the Stalkers. So, you know what? Again, we look at this with the bird's eye view, and we say, no real damage is being done, but like Roddy pointed out, Keeping you thermal back, getting a couple of scans, some missile turrets, maybe a couple of tanks, you know, holding back. That gives this third Nexus a chance to get up. He's got double forge coming on. These are the things he needs to get back into it. Kevin, I know it's a long shot, mm -hmm. but he needs them. It is one hell of a long shot, Jeff. I find the double forge so ambitious here, by the way, because he doesn't have a great economy. He doesn't even have a lot of gateways. So it's not just the fact that he's investing in double forge right now. It's also the fact that now he needs to get those gateways, and that means that his army is going to stay quite small for some yeah. time. I'm a big fan of this playstyle, guys. Don't get me wrong. I love the double forge. Spam some zealots, get some blink stalkers, a guardian shield. And here we go, let's party. But I'm afraid that this early game was simply a little too bad to ever get away with double forge here. No. Like, I would almost say that your desperation play should just go straight 8 to 10 gates and hope that you can absolutely crush this fight, right? Because if Zealots get a perfect engagement, they're going to crush, whether they're 0 0 or 1 0. This is really good, by the way, picking up two of those Widow Mines. I mean, DNS is making good plays. It's a yeah. shame that his start was so bad. It is only just the one tank, so don't be deceived by this. It's a bio force. And a lot of Widow Mines coming up behind yeah. it. The Mines are going to be great against the Zealots, though. We know that. I don't disagree with you, by the way, Rod. I think a, an 8-gate and like a cheeky Warp Prism in the main would yep. be your avenue to try to get back. Maybe a Dark Shrine, something crazy like that. But either way, he's going to cut off some reinforcements. Charge is uh, going to finish before this fight happens. Just the amount of Marines is a real problem. So with the Stalkers and Zealots separated like this, where is the fight that you see DNS taking to win? I, I don't know where that what that looks like. Don't forget, Jeff, that recent patch, these upgrades, they take a little bit longer as well, so they are not done yet. Those double forges and the 1-1 upgrades so far are completely useless investment. Here are the Zealots, here is the Kiting by Uthermal. The Widow Mine shots are really good, and I think that's a little too much bio, right? Yeah. I just don't see a couple of Stalkers turning this around. Few more Zealots trying to do whatever they can. The Immortal tries to do whatever it can, but the uh, DPS of this Terran army is simply a little too much. And look at those upgrades, Jeff. They're still not done. Two gateways get depowered. DNS is going to fight on here. This is the decider game of this best of three. And he's needing a win here, but more medevacs coming over. It's going to be seven in total with Bioforce reinforcements. And it's it's too much. As he's knocking on the door, he will be allowed entry. Not because DNS wants him to, but because your thermal demands it. He's coming in. Yep. DNS knows it as well. Both games, he just had... Uh, had a bad start. He oh, wow. simply took a little too much damage. This is kind of what we perhaps predicted in the beginning of the day. Uthermo keeps on talking how he just he can't beat Protoss, Jeff. He just doesn't work out, not on the ladder. It's no. real tough. It, it is real it's tough. Real tough for him over there. I mean, it, where was it, where was he in trouble in these two games? <laughs> a pretty damn good performance by Uthermo. I would say so. Again, DNS is one of the absolute top European Protoss. It's very dangerous. Mm -hmm. Do not be, uh, you know, the way that just looked, don't be fooled. Uh, I also like to say that Uthermo looking good 
has a nice place for me too. I, I really do think of him as seriously top five Europe, and, and at times he's top yep. three. He's a very, very good player. His but he's a swingy so player. He's yep. a little bit swingy. Like you see this where he just destroys DNS, who I kid you not is like a 7K MMR Protoss yep. at the top of the European ladder. But you thermal made him look bad, and then a following weekend or two, uh, you know, it's tough. It's tough to get that consistency. So hopefully, you thermal can keep this surging forward as he does 2-0 DNS, which sets up you thermal against a laser mm -hmm. for that winner match. And then we do have in the lower bracket match Bly going against DNS. Bly versus DNS should be a fun one as well. I can already see it, Jeff. I know your favorite word to describe those series is clown fiesta. <laughs> that that should be one. Is that a one word? Not two words. There we go. That's okay. And Amsterdam's one word, but <laughs> anyways, ladies, we're having a lot of fun over here. <laughs> Hopefully, you guys are as well. This next match will be Bly versus DNS. But first, a quick break. Go heat something up, even if it's just you. We'll be back in a minute.